morning. Welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bradenton. We have a few announcements today. Uh, we have a virtual coffee hour going on on Sunday uh, at 10 a.m., uh, so bring your coffee and join us uh, to catch up. And we are continuing our Zoom Following Jesus Together groups as scheduled. Uh, if you need information on either one of those, uh, please look at the church website or give the office a call. And now we turn our attention to Christ Jesus, the one who indeed loves us. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Amen. 
most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the gathering hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This?
we join in the hymn of praise, Praise Ye the Lord. So that you, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the 66th Psalm. Please join in singing responsibly from Psalm 66. Thank you.
please join in singing the Alleluia verse. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another paraclete to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you and is in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you shall live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and manifest myself to them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. someone to talk to, you can talk to Jesus. How do we talk to Jesus? We pray. So let us talk with Jesus. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for listening to us. Help us listen to others. Help us listen to others. And help us love others. And help us love others. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Amen.
paraclete. And it's Jesus' parting gift to his disciples right before he's crucified. This gift of paraclete is what not only accompanies us through every challenge of every day, it's also what grants us deep joy and abundant life. Let's dive into the scriptures that we have for today and explore how this paraclete indeed accompanies us. Our first scripture that Vicar read was from 1 Peter, the third chapter. And one of the members of our FJT group, when we read through this, was um, amazed at how uncanny it is that Peter, the disciple who sat in the courtyard while Jesus was being tried and denied even knowing him three times, later on writes in his letter an exhortation, always be prepared to make a defense, to give a reason for the hope that is in you. Peter the denier becomes Peter the encourager, telling the disciples back then and us now that we can always be ready to defend the faith, the gift of hope that lives inside us. What's the simplest way to do that? Years ago, the Swiss-German theologian Karl Barth was questioned by a group of students about his faith. And he claimed that the best testimony of faith was to say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. If those words from a simple children's Bible song are good enough to communicate the core of faith for a learned theologian, I suspect they're good enough for my testimony and yours as well. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me is the theme of our scripture from John's Gospel today as well. Matter of fact, the theme of love is like a, a river that carves out the entire Gospel of John. Speaking first in the third chapter, that beloved verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. And moving throughout the book of John to where we find ourselves today in the farewell discourse, the last words, the final address that Jesus gave to his disciples before he died. Those most important words in the 13th chapter, Jesus sums up the mission for his disciples. Love one another as I have loved you. He was about to depart from them and leave them, but he wanted to leave them with a mission, a mission to love everybody, the way he had showed them and taught them, and then demonstrated that last night on his knees, washing their feet. A mission of love, a mission of service. Last week in our confirmation class over Zoom, we were talking about the sacrament of Holy Communion and we talked about how our altar still is a piece of furniture in the chancel and how the altar originally was the place where little animals, uh, an unblemished sheep or goat were sacrificed to God and how we, we still have an altar now because with Jesus' sacrifice of his life for us on the cross, no longer do we need to bring animals to sacrifice to God but the sacrifice of love is what's called for. Giving ourselves, our time, our energy, our care for one another, and our love and service of God is what is now epitomized on this altar. But how is it that we 
mere humans can even begin to try to love like Jesus loves, giving ourselves away and, and sacrificing. It's not even in our nature. And so Jesus promised the first disciples and us. He said, wait, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send you another paraclete. The Father will send another paraclete. First of all, letting us know that Jesus is the first paraclete sent. And what is a paraclete? Well, over the, the centuries, there have been many ways that we've translated that Greek term, paraclete. It actually means to come alongside, paraclete, to come right alongside, to be present with. And it's the spirit of truth, Jesus says, that comes to be present with each of his disciples. Sometimes we understand that spirit to be a comforter, one who consoles us when we're in deep grief. Sometimes we experience the one who comes alongside us as a, a friend, as a companion in the, the journey of life. Sometimes a helper, one to aid and to assist us, Sometimes an advocate, like a defense lawyer, to plead our case. Sometimes a protector. Always right beside us. Whether we're even conscious of the paraclete's presence or not, this spirit of truth is with us. Jesus promises. And Jesus says, the spirit of truth that, that comes to us as lovers of Jesus, that spirit is not accepted by the world. The world can't receive the spirit of truth because the world's not looking for the spirit and doesn't know it. One of the sage members of our FJT gathering commented that the world right now, what the world is looking for is for things to return back the way they used to be, to get back to normal so people can be happy. But for we who are accompanied by the Paraclete, our joy isn't disturbed by what's happening around us. The presence of the paraclete lets us know that we are closely held in God's love and that the gift of abundant life and joy that Jesus promises is ours even right now. Oh, certainly. We may long again for the day when we can gather together and worship as a community in the, the same place and not just virtually. But that doesn't affect our joy one bit. The paraclete resides in us and with us. In a couple of weeks from now, we'll celebrate the first coming of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit with the celebration of Pentecost. Until then, I have a little story to tell you. There was once twins born, 12 weeks early, little girls, tiny, only a couple of pounds. In the NICU, it seemed as though they were going to do okay, though, until one twin quit thriving and, and gaining. The other was, was doing well, and it baffled those caring for these little ones, why one would continue to thrive and one not. Finally, in a measure of, of desperation, one of the nurses took the tiny one who was struggling and placed it 
right next to her twin in the same bassinet. And almost immediately, the little one curled together with her twin, her heart rate increased, and she began the road to recovery. Know, people of God, that the Spirit, the Paraclete, longs for you to snuggle beside and to gain the gift of breath and hope and life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please join as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of healing, restore your world. Be with the people who are suffering from all ailments. Restore our relationships with one another as you gather us to be one in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wholeness, fill this faith community in this time. There are many longing for love. Feed and fill all of your children, especially those on our prayer list and those we name now, aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, open our eyes to see your triune action through the works of the Holy Spirit. Bring us peace in these times of great uncertainty. Calm our hearts and minds and guide us in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share God's peace in your home. Now we take a moment to think over our offering and what we do in this world that God has so gifted us with. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the offering of our hearts and lives and the gifts we are enabled to share because of your generosity. Amen. Now may you see the love of Jesus overflow in your life today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go forth with the singing song, Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.